on some calls. Whoop, and we're going live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Time to Shine Happiness Show, sponsored by the Diamond Factor Experience. My co-host, Barbara Beckley, has unfortunately uh, had a death in her family. So, Barb, our condolences go out to you. And uh, we pray for comfort for your, you and your family. Anyways, but you know what? The thing is, life does go on. So we are here to talk about what an absolutely perfect subject for today with our guest, Susie Vine, because she deals with stress. Oh, yeah. And this is a perfect example of things that happen in our lives that cause us stress. So Susie, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. How are you doing this morning? And Thank you. I am doing great. All bundled up here in wintry San Diego. We were just comparing notes. I'm actually from the Illinois area, from central Illinois. So I know what winter really means. Don't think I was born with a thin skin, but it's amazing how quickly we can get a little soft. <laughs> I know. That's that one day a friend of mine called me and she lives in Florida and she said, oh, it's so cold here. It's 79. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I said it was, you know, it was 30. And then when it down to 34, when it went down to 34 in Orlando, it was horrendous. But anyways, Susie, I'm so happy that you are here. Tell us, how did you, how did you get started in stress management? Because we all, we all deal with it. And what, what do you think is the definite, the main definition of stress? Oh, oh, it's going to get good in here. Um, you we know are what? Get good. We're just going to dive right in. Not all stress is bad. And that's what I'm really excited to share with people. So I got really passionate about stress and sharing the message that we can be empowered in the way that we approach it and our health in general. Fairly recently, really. I mean, I made a pivot to get into holistic health only about five years ago, but I am a nurse's daughter. My mother was a labor and delivery nurse for 40 years. So, and wow. actually, when I was young, she said, When you grow up, be anything you want. If you go into medicine, I'll disown you. Ah. So I waited. Was forty to come around and get back into healthcare, and and you know in the fashion that that I consider myself to be an advocate, a, a cheerleader, if you will. Um, but I showed her. I went into theater first, and so I worked backstage in theaters around the country for ten years, and then I kept deciding what else I'd like to be when I grow up. So I've had a couple of cycles of reinvention, but it's all led me to be exactly where I am supposed to be now. I'm I'm humming now. <laughs> yeah. You're in the and right so, key, right? Sorry? You're humming along right now in the right key now. Yes, yes, in the right key. I've, I've got the melody and it's all coming together. Yes, yeah, so um, sorry, I was going to say in my most recent work, I was working with clients in their 80s and 90s and I was helping them move out of their family home. Um, most commonly, they'd been there for 40 or 50 years and it was the last thing that they wanted to do, but for the most part, it was due to health challenges or they had lost a spouse or someone had dementia, which happens. We expect that you know illness and, and life is going to change when we get older, but it doesn't have to have that impact. If we are proactive in the way that we approach our health and our lifestyle, we can have a lot more options. We can remain a lot more independent and, and have that vitality that we want as we get older. And so that's what really lit the spark in me to start bringing this message out while we're younger and it's easier to make these changes. We don't have to make right. such a hard correction. Awesomeness, you know, and and that's exactly true because I re, I can remember years ago after my, well after my husband passed away, talk about stress, um, mm -hmm. and I had no idea what I wanted to do. How was I going to live the rest of my life without being a wife or you know? And I was like, okay, so now what? But you know what? That that the stress of that though did start my journey of where, where do I want to go? And, and you know what, in some ways, I'm grateful that I started it now at, I said, I started it at 60 rather than trying to start it at 90. I can't imagine. Yeah, truly. 
Truly. And, and speaking of what poor Barbara and her family are going through right. and what you found out, you know, when you right. had to navigate that without your husband, resilience right. doesn't come from living on easy street. It's these right. trials that really show us what we're made of, right? That like you've been able to do, find the silver lining, you know, these these cliches, they stick around for a reason. The more we're able to look for the positives, Right. The relationships that come out of those times that feel impossibly difficult when we're in them, that's really the beauty. And that's what makes us stronger and more resilient so we can keep on stepping up to whatever life is going to serve up because it's going to keep on doing that. Right. You know, because you know, one of the things, and you and I have talked about this before, is that so often it's not what happens to us, it's how we deal with what happens to us. Yes, and 100%. A hundred, a hundred percent. I mean, look at what's going. Let's let's the elephant in the room of this past year and continuing. Some people, depending on who you talk to, some people have thrived and some people have just and checked out. Yes. And you know, and the and right now for myself, you know, I'm a personality science trainer and a happiness coach, um, and the happiness level in the world is is going down in the handbasket, but the suicide rate is skyrocketing. Yes. And I think and, that's and teens. all the, in, in, in teens. A friend of mine is in teen suicide prevention, and she said 2,000 kids, teenagers, a day at least think or attempt suicide. And, and that... I mean, there's so many factors that go into it and it's just devastating. And, and in so yeah. many cases, those, those, that turmoil is below the surface. And even the ones who are close to the situation have no idea until, until, you know, it's, it's too late, but this feeling of isolation of disconnection, it had started before 2020. Right. I think, I think this last year just shone a light on everything that needs to be addressed on those right. feelings of isolation on these chronic conditions that we thought you know oh well that's par for the course diabetes and heart disease and growing rates of dementia mm, i don't really know what's going on but it's complicated and we're busy you know and, right. and this is such a wake up call we've got to dig into yeah. this right exactly yeah. and, you know and for myself i look back on my husband we didn't we didn't know there was anything wrong until it was too late because mm -hmm. you know he was 60 and the only thing that well, the only symptom he had was that his stream wasn't when he was urinating wasn't quite as strong and he was going more often well he just kept saying oh it's my prostate and that's because i'm 60. well unbeknownst to us he had a tumor growing in his bladder and by the time, it, then when it perforated the bladder wall, it spread everywhere. Oh. Oh. Well, there and then was, you don't have any time to prepare. There was, it's just there was you that when that was like, but he he held on for almost two years. But still, it was if we, you know what? And that's why you're know, like for me, if you have anything. If you're feeling stress about something, like, I, don't you think, Susie, that we know in our bodies if something is not quite right, we feel not yes. quite right. But then we, but then I know for myself, and that was David. Oh, it's just, and we slough it off. Absolutely, and what makes me livid? <laughs> sometimes it takes me a lot to get fired up. But when people go to their doctors and they have a doctor telling them. Well, these things change as we get older. Well, you can't expect to be exactly. feeling the way you were when you were 30. Well, that weight gain is normal. Well, that fatigue and that, you know, people don't sleep as well when they get older. And it's so important to advocate for yourself. I mean, we advocate for the ones that we love. We'll change our diet if our spouse is diagnosed with diabetes. But if it's us, oh, that's hard. You know, and we have to turn that back around and love ourselves enough to be that committed to change and to stand up for what we deserve. Right. And for me to look for alternatives, like yeah. I have, like for myself, one of the things I have dealt with arthritis, I got kicked by a horse when I was, oh. I don't know, I can't remember how old I was in my twenties. Anyways. And when I had gone to the doctor, 
uh, they had said, oh, yeah, you're, you know, yeah, you're, it's okay, but it's slightly misplaced, not broken or anything, but your hip is slightly misplaced. You're probably going to be feeling that when you hit 40. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Well, of course, 38, 39 came and it was like, ooh, my hip hurts. But what's wrong with my hip? Totally forgetting about being kicked by a horse when I was 19 or 20. Anyways, but one of the things that now I am absolutely pain free because I have used nutritional supplements and I do sound therapy for pain. Be open to yes. other, be open to other modalities. Don't rely on just medical doctors. And you wouldn't believe how many people that since, and I was introduced to on a meetup group. One of the men there had been in a car accident and one of the, one of the therapies that he had to do was sound therapy. And I said, sound therapy. I said, okay, you know, I'll look into it. Well, guess what? I use it. And I have several people that use it and they all go, oh, wow, well, Barb, this really works. So be open. <laughs> So, exactly. So how can we relate that to what you do with stress? Well, you know, I just want to say briefly too, I, so I started my journey into holistic health and being aware of how we can heal ourselves by studying homeopathy. Mm -hmm. I use flower essences and those operate on that energetic level too. Right. And then I really wanted to get grounded because not everybody comes from that perspective, right? So I right. studied to be a holistic health practitioner and got into the anatomy and physiology and wondered why didn't I love science like this 20 years ago? I could have had a completely different trajectory. But it's true. And science is finally catching up to begin to demonstrate why these energetic modalities and I don't call it alternative therapies because mm. some of this has been around for thousands of years, much right. longer than standardized medicine. So complementary therapies um, is really, really terrific. And here in San Diego at um, University of California, San Diego, UCSD has phenomenal research and they are looking at these complementary modalities. One of their... Um, Foremost, she's out speaking all the time and she hosts a sound healing event every Saturday that's free and you can sign up for. I'll post a, a link to her website in the comments so people can sign up if they want and just experience this if this is new and radical to you. Um, but I think that's it. That yeah. new and radical. That's what it's like. Oh, that's is new and radical. No, some of them you like you've talked about some of them have been around for 2000 years. It's like with me with personality science. Personality science has been around for 2500 years. It's not new. But now but we're only now starting to embrace it as more and more people like yourself are getting the message out there. And looking at the whole person not yes. putting ourselves into pigeonholes and seeing, you know, all the ten, 10 different specialists that don't communicate. Right. You know, and, and, and one of the things that's really interesting, um, you start to hear more people are talking about the vagus nerve and resetting our vagus nerve or vagal tone. And this one nerve, it's the one cranial nerve that comes out of the head and actually it enervates all of the organs the digestive organs, our lungs. So when we get stressed out and we feel that our digestion is interrupted, our breathing changes. I mean, there's other hormones that are released and impact the way that they work, but it's all, it's all connected. We say that all the time. It's not just a woo thing. It really is all connected by changing our breathing. We can change our biological response to stress like that. Wow. Okay. You know, because now I've never heard that term. So, hey, I, but I'm always open to, I'm a prevention girl. I would rather do alternatives than, you know, like they told me I was going to have to eventually have hip replacement. And I'm like, yeah, and now I don't. So, yeah, exactly. so now, so now say, say it again, what you just said, the, the vagus. The vagus nerve, it's spelled V-A-G-U-S. Okay, exactly. I'll have, I yeah. will do some research on that. And we're going to have to have you come on again and explain more. Or let's talk about it. Um, so, okay. Wow. So if somebody has never, like myself, has never heard about it before, what would you say to expand that they would know that, wow, this really is something that's been around for longer than five minutes? 
<laughs> right, right. And it's so interesting. Suddenly something hits and everybody um, just dives right in and starts paying attention. Well, one of the things, and and this first came to me again as I was studying, and it's so interesting. You know, now that I've mentioned this, I'll bet you start hearing people talking about it everywhere. You know, it's that right. reticular activation. It's that awareness, system, right? The awareness. If you just haven't, it hasn't registered before. Um, but when I was studying science, I one of my lab partners was a paramedic. You know, they love to get clinical hours before they continue on and to study medicine. And he explained to me as we were talking about how the breathing changes our heart rate because it's all within our, our ribs right. in the chest cavity there. If you exhale slowly, and so mm -hmm. this is why the breath and meditation is so powerful. Say if you inhale on four counts and you exhale on six or seven counts, that slower exhale has a direct impact on the, the rate of your heartbeat. It slows your heartbeat. So if you're oh, anxious. Okay. In for four, out for six or seven. Okay. Because yeah. exactly. I, do four and four, I do four and four, but do yeah. in for four and out for six. Perfect. Yes. I will do that. Thank you. And, See, and he said what they new. do. Yeah, ta-da. He said what Why they I do is I if they need cool. to calm someone down, they actually have them blow out like through through the tube of a pen or through a straw. If you focus your breath, that is even more immediately impactful. But if you just as you're breathing, have a longer exhale than inhale, then and it's so powerful. And then you're bringing your attention to what you can be doing about your situation. You can start becoming aware and present and pull yourself out of that reactive state of that stress response. Oh, right. Now, can, yeah. is that something that if somebody was having a panic attack, is that would it can would help? That, it can, it help. can help. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's another exercise that's really lovely. And again, and it's easier to practice this before you're really in the heat of a moment because it's hard to remember anything, you know, and get our right. bearings when life has really got us in a grip. Um, you can use all five senses. So if you, in whatever order, but if you work through your five senses and start out with five things you can see and then four things you can hear, and then three things you can smell or taste, you know, and just work down through your right. senses, two things. And so that, again, brings you back and brings you out of that reactive state of mind. So that is one exercise that I've heard many people recommend for oh. if you're having an anxiety attack, that's a powerful way to pull yourself back out. So my, right. maybe even more powerful than simply the breath work. But right. like I can remember so, my mom saying, oh, count to 10. I'm counting to 10. And I can yes. Remember, I can remember her saying that. And right. And I've done that. I've done that. Counting yeah. Moms have got to have their tools though, to come back to balance. And, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was one of four girls and we used to fight like cats and dogs. One time it was so bad. My mom ran away on us and it was, I mean, it, her. it turned out to be a funny story. But at the time, we were like, "Oh, brother, mom's mother, mom's run away." <laughs> I mean, we were we were older. I mean, it wasn't like we were young kids. Uh, we were all self sufficient, and but she yeah. actually she did run away because usually whenever she would go away, she would cook for us and have stuff in the freezer. And her note to us was, "I've gone to Vancouver with your dad. I'll be back Thursday. And the refrigerator is empty. Have a nice <laughs> week." <laughs> but boy, it shaped us up. We were like, ooh, I guess mom is really fed up with us. She's not going to put up with these four older, just pre-adults who can't get along. Oh, for heaven's sakes. So it was just it was just an interesting thing. And I look back on it now. And then, we, of course, when she came back from Vancouver, we just laughed. We were like, mom, we're so glad to see you. We're so sorry we argued. Yes. You know? Well, and I love that. That's a perfect illustration because especially moms, and I wasn't blessed to have my own children. I have a grown stepdaughter who is phenomenal. She doesn't live um, nearby. So we just see her a couple times a year. Yeah. But when you give and give and give, right? When you don't yeah. put yourself first, you don't have anything left to give. You can't pour right. from an empty cup. Exactly. Right. And the most important thing I believe, says the one who doesn't have any right to say so, is that you can teach your kids how important that is too. 
that their health and their happiness is important and they are the ones who are responsible for it. So they need to, you need to do whatever it takes mm -hmm. to restore yourself. Right. And when, I mean, and we, I don't think we realized how bad we were and which was so bad for ourselves. Like my, my sister and I, my oldest sister and I, we are best friends. We talk sometimes every day and we can, we look back on that and go, oh, right. But it was always Liz and I against Debbie and Di because that was the dynamic of the family. That was the, that was the four of us, Liz and I against Debbie and Di. And it was just hysterical. We would, we would go back, but my, but you know what? Sometimes it takes drastic measures to get your attention. And when mom ran away on us for those days, I mean, I think I was 18 when she did it. <laughs> um, when she read that got our attention that, oh yeah, we have to change our ways. And not only for mom, but for ourselves. We cannot live in this state of disharmony. It is going to cause repercussions later on. Like when the doctor told me you're going to be feeling your hip when you're in your forties. Mm -hmm. Later Absolutely. on. Absolutely. And you know, I, I, I see some people in their relationships, they get into that space where they kind of feed on that energy of sparring, you know, right. trading barbs. And sometimes it yeah. goes just a little further, right? Or it stings a little bit more. And so you serve it right back up. And it's just a question of, of recognizing, like you say, sometimes it takes an event to give you that perspective to recognize right. this maybe isn't the healthiest way for us to connect. Right. Are we even right. hearing each other anymore or what we're saying, exactly right? And you don't want to disregard what you're saying to each other. Right. Stuff tends to roll downhill. And that's one thing too, you know, is burnout and work-related stress in the last year has really gone up. People are working from home and more hours than they were before. You would think less. You'd think we got our commute time back. We can have time to exercise, oh, right. but it's really gone up. Oh, wow. And when we're stressed at work, that's not usually where we express that. It's It shows up in our relationships because that's the place where we're safe and we can be ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then it's landing on the last person that we want to be unloading all of that on. So it's it, you have to be aware of that. Absolutely true. And you know what? Now that you say that, that is so true because so often, I mean, I now literally have to set a timer sometimes to make me stand up. Otherwise, three hours go by and I'm like, oh yeah, when was the last time I stood up? Yeah. Exactly. Or, okay, Barbara, you have to set, I have to set an alarm to go to bed. Barbara, it's almost midnight. Go to bed. <laughs> go to bed. You know, because we, we really do, we, especially if it's something that you're excited about. And, and and so let's talk about you talked we talked about at the beginning the good stress. So when like for me like right now I am so excited about some projects that I'm doing that if they're stressful but I'm so enjoying them and that's what I'm finding that it's like Barbara for heaven's sakes go to bed quit or quit you have got to, <laughs> this isn't the only thing in your life go talk to you I mean my grandchildren live in the next room go talk to your grandchildren. So. Yes. And you know, it's, it's, it's funny that that flow state that we dream of achieving, right? Where we're in the zone with work and the time is no obstacle or athletes really hit their peak performance. That flow state yeah. comes from stress. It doesn't come from a stress-free life. And so, you know, stress is designed um, to teach us so that we don't repeat mistakes, so that we have those lessons and so we keep growing. I mean, even at its most fundamental biological level, right? Don't poke the bear. <laughs> it's gonna go badly. So, um, you know, and, and there's some question about if you perceive stress as beneficial or enhancing, or if you perceive stress to be a threat or harming if that's a biological response, if that's a matter of, of modeling. And I do think it has a lot to do with how we see our parents and people in our lives receive stress. And some people love that adrenaline rush. Some people want to go bungee jumping and, you know, free climbing on rock faces. And that doesn't appeal to me. I don't need that level of stress. 
but I love change. I've moved a number of times when I worked in theater, I would, you know, change theaters every couple of years. I've lived in all corners of the country. Some people live, you know, their whole lives within a hundred miles of their hometown, right. which is great. We need the people to hold down the heartland is what I say from a sunny San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have to find that, that middle ground, right? People who feed off of that stress, that's not necessarily this, the healthiest way to live. But at the same time, people who really will do anything to avoid change, if you can start finding the benefit of it, like we were talking about life's hardest situations, if you can start seeing that not all change is bad, you know, a little curveball every once in a while just gives you a chance to show what you're made of, you can step up to the challenge. Everybody can, and and this is what I'm really excited to share with people. And a lot of what I do is just empowering people to change their mindset. Because when you recognize that the way you perceive stress changes the way your body reacts to stress. So um, one of the most common connections is that stress causes heart disease. You know, if you're stressed out, you'll give yourself a heart attack. And it's true. And um, it's because that, that stress reaction causes our blood vessels to constrict especially when we feel that it's a threat. But there's been research, there's a lot of really exciting work being done in the field of positive psychology. They're happiness researchers. And when they've looked at how people perceive stress and they just help people recognize, you can change your perception, you can change your approach. You're gonna be more successful if you see stress as an opportunity to prove yourself that blood vessel constriction stops immediately. We stop that physical harm from ourselves by changing the way we perceive stress. Right, right. Yeah. I, have, I have to admit, uh, one time I was listening to, oh, I'm blank of her name, the five second rule. Um, and, she sa and she says that when, you, when she's going on stage, Mel Robbins, um, and that, that fear that you feel where your heart is pounding, your stomach is upset, you're sweating bullets. It's exactly the same physio, all physio, that word has excitement. Yep. And I can remember I was doing a presentation. I mean, it wasn't for that. It wasn't, I think there was maybe 30 people, but I was just feeling that. And I'm like, Barbara, you have a choice. Talk to yourself. You're, this is a choice. Okay. I'm excited. I am not fearful of this. I'm excited about this. And you know what? In that one little second of switch, it was like, oh, you know what? I really am excited about this. And I mean, I still, I still had all the symptoms. I was still shaking in my boots and feeling just, <sighs> and, and I have, and one of the things is, is that being authentic about it, letting people know that that's how you're feeling. And I mentioned right. it in the group. I said, oh, I said, I have to tell you that I have just been really feeling this nervousness and, you know, and one of the girls said, well, really? You sure don't look it. And I went, that doesn't mean it's not there. But but as soon as I voiced it and they were like, oh, well, you know, you, I wouldn't have known, Barb. It was like, oh, right. They can't even tell. So it's just, it's internal. <laughs> it's internal. So we can we can tell ourselves hey you know i'm yes. excited as opposed to i'm fearful so it was just a really interesting it was like oh wow yeah and and what yeah. a perfect way to humanize yourself and let your audience relate to you and it just it brings it all down a couple of notches right yeah they're rooting right. for you you're right. being authentic and you got that out of the way like oh yeah you know, I'm nervous. Yeah. If I get tongue tied, I, now y'all know why. Yeah, well, yeah, I do. <laughs> that, that's one of the things that I love about this show. And that, you know, Barb and I, we talked about it is that this is, we're genuine. This is it. This is the time to shine happiness show. And you know what part of happiness is being authentic and being yourself. And because for myself, I believe that when we are authentic, going outwards, it gives other people the permission to be authentic for them. 
I will clap to that. <laughs> Zoom clap all around. Absolutely. Yeah. And and it's so true. And and I think that that is the million dollar point right there too. Authentic happiness, right? When we're pretending, right. when we're putting on the smile, but it it doesn't resonate, that doesn't do anybody any favors. And it, and it reads that it's not an authentic way of being. And we are completely justified in putting our happiness, you know, high on the list of priorities right. because there's so many right. benefits to it. I mean, health benefits, of course, it just feels better to be in a happier frame of mind, but we're more successful, you know, we're, we're, you know, in it, just in terms of work terms, we have more confidence, our sales go up, our right. work performance improves. They were studying doctors, their accuracy and diagnoses go up 20% when they're in a positive really? mindset. Isn't that oh, wow. crazy? That, yeah. see, uh, that's why I love he, that. See, now I'm going to be able to use that. Yeah. And yep. that because it's absolutely the truth. When you are, when you have that positivity, things, you know, it's like, and just and it, it doesn't take much to have that little mind shift. When you're having it, like with me, if I, you know, w w nobody wakes up every day feeling, oh, wow, today's happy. And just, no. But you know what? On the days when I do wake up and I'm feeling a little bit less, put on a happy, you know what? Put on that happy song. What is, what's, oh, there is that song. You just, just get happy. <laughs> that always you know, works, something, right? Something that makes you, but it, but it's different for everybody. Yep. Find your own thing that makes you feel different, more exactly. positive, because we are all different. Don't that? Don't you think that that's part of the bad stress? Is that we compare ourselves to so many other people instead of finding for ourselves? Absolutely. That's one of the things I come back to when people say work-life balance is impossible. And I think that's because we're looking at what we perceive other people demonstrating that work-life balance to look like. It looks like exactly what you need it to look like. If you want to stay home with the kids and that's your happy place, you know, I hope that's something that you can achieve and that's possible. If you want to go out and work and be successful and thrive in business, Nobody should shame working women for not devoting more time to their families. Whatever work-life balance feeds our soul, that's the happiness that, that we deserve to cultivate. Absolutely. Comparison will get just every time. Because, you know, we've got this, I have friends who call it fake book. You know, we see this oh, right. filtered lens yeah. of how people are living. People right. are only showing up the good days. They're not showing us that they all have bad days too. Right. And like you say too, you know, whatever it is that helps you turn your mood around, if it's music, it is for a lot of people, whatever music it is that you love, you know, that gets your right. body moving. Exercise right. is huge in turning around an anxiety and depression. It, it helps to metabolize those stress hormones. So if you're in a situation where you really feel that stress response, if you can go take a walk, that's one of the most powerful ways or play some music and move your body, dance around to start twist. clearing that out. Exactly. Yeah, you can do that in your chair. I you can get it going on. But when we take action, when we decide, I want to be in a better mood, what can I do to take care of myself? Yeah, so helpful. And just like I was saying, it it help, really helps to think about that before you're in that moment, before you wake up and you're like, the last thing I want to do is get out of bed today. If you've given it some thought, if you've kind of worked through some self-care strategies that nourish yourself, it makes it a little easier. One of the things that I just really want to comment of what you just said, you said the word decide. That is a huge word we have the right and the capability of deciding every day yeah 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 a mutual friend of ours puts it so beautifully when we were talking she said who do you want to be today do you want to be eeyore do you want to be piglet do you want to be yeah. rabbit and get some work done yes. yeah you know who i'm talking know, about she's oh, a ray of sunshine too we and she is and we we <laughs> and we're talking about julie cotton and she has been on this show so people know that julie cotton 
And she just is, and that was one, and one, and I said to her one day, and I think, in fact, I told you this when we, when you and I first connected, that she said, you know, you get to decide what character you're going to play today. And that absolutely resonated with me. And that was like, oh, you're right. I do. Anyways, so. Susie, this has been wonderful. So now we want people to be able to get in touch with you. So what is the best way to get in touch with you, to chit chat, that kind of stuff? Absolutely. So the um, the website that you're sharing there is a little something that I love to share with people. I've got I've got a lot of different resources. I'm a shop girl. I used to paint the sets. I was not center stage. So I love the, having the best tool for the job. So what um, is available through the link there are some tips in how if, if confidence or if stress, if you feel like it's holding you back, there's some mindset tools and shifts that okay. you can explore there. Okay. Um, and you can find me here on Facebook at, um, I think it's Susie B vine, but whatever, that's easy to find. I'll, I'll be posting a comment here with some of those resources too. And um, I have a Facebook group where I love to share conversation and I go live and have tools. In December, I did 30 days of self-care. So if you don't have a self-care practice, there might be some inspiration there. And the group is called Live With Less Stress. And it's just a place where, like you say, you know, if you're going to decide that you want to take a little bit of action, you know, lifestyle change isn't easy. Breaking old habits or instilling new habits is hard because so much of what we do is habitual. So changing our way right. can be difficult. But I share tools and inspiration. And as you start making a shift, you create space for more shifts. And that's when the momentum right. starts moving us in the right direction. So right. that's what I'm all about. I share that in the group, too. Right. You know, and, and that's exactly, I love what you just said, that when you, when you let go of one thing, let go of some of the stress that you're under. And don't you find that so much of it is self-imposed? Yes. I know for myself, it's self-imposed stress. So when we can let go of some of this stress, then it makes room for so much more abundance to come into our lives. That is such a great Thank you, Susie. That was uh, that was a perfect way to to bring it all together because it 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 absolutely does. It absolutely does. So, what's one tip that you can that you want to part up to our audience before we well, we were we, we were up? talking about breathing before and. Um... I love, like I said, one of my favorite researchers um, advocates this happiness reset, and he found with research, he's validated this. If you do one habit for 21 days, there's five different ones you can choose from, you will feel measurably happier. So I would suggest if you feel like you're up to a challenge and up to an adventure, um, take five minutes to meditate. Just check in with your breath. Five minutes goes a lot faster than you think it will. For 21 days in a row, set a timer or a reminder on your phone before work, over lunch break, it's a great reset. Give yourself five minutes a day for 21 days and see how you feel. See if you find yourself a little more patient, have a little more tolerance, and a little more focus at work too. It's got a lot of great benefits and happiness. And so the, and so the breathe in on four and out for six. Yep, yep. And it's okay. You know, thoughts want to crowd in. Just let them float on away. No judgments. Just tune into your breath for five minutes. Yeah, I love that. No judgments. Yeah. That's our <laughs> practice in itself sometimes. That's a, that's a practice in itself sometimes because you're, the to-do list comes into play. But I should be doing this. I should be doing that. I should be doing this. Susie, this has been amazing. We are going to have to definitely have you back on the show again. This I will would be love that. I was so that. looking forward to connecting with your partner in crime. So we're sending her yeah. lots of love and prayers well, and support. And I uh, would love to come back and hang with you ladies again. All right. Well, this is Barbara Lunan Ellison. I am your personality pro because personality does drive reality. And thank you so much for tuning into the Time to Shine Happiness show. And from the Diamond Factor, uh, LL Diamond Factor experience and Barbara Beckley, our hearts go out to you. And uh, we just thank you so much for that. Even even in the midst, and that's you know the the sign of a true leader. Even in the midst of what she's going through right now, she's still doing the tech part for this show today. 
And I am so grateful to her that, that she is able to do that. And Barb, thank you so, so, so much. And just know that our prayers and our thoughts are with you today. Anyway, so she's going to be ending the show any only second now. But you know what? Was one of the beauty 